Hi, Year 5, it's Mrs Gibbons here. I hope you're well. So, welcome to session two of our reading this week. Uh, we are learning to develop our vocabulary. So, uh, if you remember, we were looking at a non fiction text about Mount Everest. Uh, so, I will just reread that text to you as a little refresher before we start to look in more detail at some of the vocabulary. Okay, Everest, a dangerous place. Everest in the high Himalayas stands tall and firm, a giant unmoved by wind or snow, the air too thin for plant or animal life. Climbing Mount Everest is hard and dangerous work. Even with the aid of modern technology, the fittest of climbers may experience the effects of hypoxia, a lack of oxygen to the brain. Then their dreams of reaching the summit of the highest mountain in the world are over. Adjusting your body to the thin air Allowing it to get used to lower levels of oxygen is vital if a climber wants to tackle Mount Everest. On early expeditions to Mount Everest, climbers trek for weeks to get to base camp, which gave people's bodies time to adjust. Today, climbers have flown into Lukla, a Sherpa village from where it takes just 10 days to reach base camp. This shortens the amount of time a climber has to acclimatise to the thin air. Base camp. Once at Everest Base Camp, there follows a period of further acclimatisation. Base Camp is situated on a glacier that constantly shifts and moves beneath your feet. It is an inhospitable place filled with the brightly coloured tents of climbers who are anxious to make it to the top. The climb to Mount Everest summit begins with the traverse of the Kumbu Icefall. This is a steep glacier filled with deep crevices and huge ice blocks. It should be climbed in the early morning when the sun has not yet warmed the snow and ice. A mass of fixed ropes and ladders cross the crevasses to enable climbers to get across the glacier. Without them, no climber would make it through. It is a dangerous start to the climb for the ice fall is unpredictable. The giant blocks of ice which dominate the area can weigh up to 30 tonnes each. These blocks can shift without warning and crevices can cave in taking climbers with them. Later in the day, the ice fall becomes even more unpredictable and unstable. To cross it then would be foolhardy in the extreme. So I have pulled out some vocabulary from this text that we're going to look at more carefully. So the first word that we're going to look at is inhospitable. So it's always useful to look at the word in context and uh, that will help us to understand its meaning. So the sentence is, it says, it is an inhospitable place filled with the brightly coloured tents of climbers who are anxious to make it to the So we're going to look at inhospitable. Can you work out what that word means? You might need to look it up if you're not sure on an online dictionary. Then I'd like you to write your own definition of the word inhospitable, okay? Uh, then we're going to look at some synonyms and antonyms. So obviously a quick reminder, synonyms are words that mean the same. So can you think of some words that mean the same as inhospitable? I've given you a couple to start with. So a couple of synonyms I found are unwelcoming or hostile. And then we're going to also try and think of some antonyms for this word. Antonyms are words that mean the opposite. So uh, some antonyms of inhospitable would be hospitable or welcoming. Okay, so you are going to do this in your science books. Uh, you're obviously used to how we set this out now anyway. It's up to you how you do it. You might want to do it in this formation here, or you might just want to write a list. That is fine. Um, so you can pause the video while you do that now. Um, if you're struggling, I have done some examples here that you might be able to use to get you started. Okay, and obviously you're allowed to use online thesaurus or dictionaries as well. Uh, when you're ready to move on to the next piece of vocabulary, you can unpause the video. Okay, the second word we're going to have a look at is anxious. So it says, um, it is an inhospitable place filled with the brightly coloured tents of climbers who are anxious to make it to the top. Now, you need to be careful with this word anxious because it can have different meanings. So in this sense, it's not, people aren't worried. It's not that kind of anxious. It's more about they're anxious to get started. They want to get to the top. 
So you just have to be careful when you're looking at synonyms that it's about being eager as opposed to being worried. Okay, so with our second word, anxious, as I've mentioned, we need to be careful with the context. We are talking about it as a, an eagerness. Um, same process. So can you write a definition of what this means, what the word anxious means? And can you add to my list of synonyms? And then I've left the antonyms blank for you to try and think of some. So the synonyms I've given you to start with are impatient or enthusiastic. And I've left some the antonyms blank for you to try and think of some. So it's the opposite of anxious in the sense of being eager. Again, uh, there are some examples here to get you started um, if you're struggling. Okay, so pause the video uh, for you to do your definitions, synonyms and antonyms of the word anxious. When you're ready to move on, you can unpause the video. Okay, and then the third and final piece of vocabulary we're looking at today is foolhardy. So I'll just read it in the sentence so you can see it in context. It says, later in the day, the ice fall becomes even more unpredictable and unstable. To cross it then would be foolhardy in the extreme. Okay, so can you work out what foolhardy means and write a definition of it? Uh, again, we're going to do synonyms and antonyms. I've given you one of each to get you started. So a synonym of foolhardy would be reckless. Uh, so see if you can think of some more synonyms to add to that list. And an antonym, the opposite of foolhardy, would be a word like responsible. Again, see if you can add more to the list. And also for this final one, we'd like to try and draw it. So could you draw somebody who is being foolhardy? And as usual, I've got some examples there to help you and um, I will let you go and do that now. So I will uh, speak to you tomorrow for session three. Take care. Bye.